problems with this uh, tire here it's got a slow leak and uh, I've been having to put air in it every every week here you know, I'll have it at 40 psi and then all of a sudden it's like oh yeah 20 yeah we're at 20 psi now it was around 40 so I'm gonna put some air in this guy and then, uh, and then I'm gonna take them off and uh, spray them down with some uh, Windex and see if we get some f bubblies. Uh, 28 here. Yeah, it was 140 psi. Yeah, pretty good mileage that way. But uh, don't do it too high because then it's like, oh. Pop. Yeah, that'll be good enough. Come on, get off of there, you bastard. So, you know, get them on the ground, spray them, and see if it's leaking around the bead. And then I'll check for uh, I'll check for nails and stuff. I didn't see any last time I looked, so. And these are good. I've never had any problems with these. I do freaking burnouts with them all the time. So, you know, this one's good too. They're all 40 psi. But this one here, I don't know. Something's not right with it. I have a feeling that maybe my wheels are probably just old and they could have like a small pinhole rust leak somewhere. It's getting through the bead or something. I don't know. All right, I'm going to jack that wheel up and pull it off. Got something in my eye. Yeah, my, I'm a little burnt. My shoulders are on fire. I went to Savi's Island with this thing. We had some friends. We... Oh, I sw did some swimming. It was great, but we didn't buy waterproof sunscreen. Anyways, I can't find any leaks with this tire. Um, you know, I, I just can't tell. It's too small of a leak. I mean, it takes like almost two weeks for it to a week to two weeks to get into 20 psi and all these others are good uh, I did notice my uh, caster bushing there walked a little bit I, I did have it kind of concave when I first put it in there so I got him back to normal and clamped him down so they shouldn't walk around once they're clamped because um, uh, this other side here hasn't moved at all it's been at the same spot so I got them back to normal so they were all even out on the caster. Um, they're actually not that bad to adjust. Um, the thing I recommend that you do um, is you can uh, loosen that nut to where it's like about ready to come off, but not all the way because uh, this wheel, being that it has spring weight on it, it's actually going to want to push the wheel forward, so you want to have a wheel block in front of it and then uh, you get that loosened up and maybe put a jack under the radius arm lift it up a tiny bit and then that takes tension off it so you can move the bushing around you'll have to use two hands and really camo clutch it or whatever the hell that word's called that term is but you can adjust them uh, they're pretty it's pretty difficult to adjust them uh, to, you can't rotate them all the way around like you would think um, because the radius arm doesn't adjust at the axle it's uh, air kind of you know flexing everything so pretty much just straight down is all you want um, yeah that's the way I got that that radius arm is down far as you can possibly go now uh, that gives me about one degree of caster with a uh, one inch lift coil spring in it so and it's been settling too um, so I noticed it's I have no air in the bags in the back so it's settled a little bit, so I think we've 
Got a little bit of camber back. Even more than what we put into it with the bushings, but yeah, um, it was just a little tiny goofy things, you know, with my truck. Uh, it's not a Ford thing, it's uh, just, you know, all the aftermarket stuff I've got to put on it. It's kind of just needs some fine tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. Um, I'm supposed to get Adam's welder later today when he gets off work, and I'm going to try and put a nut on the one screw that I stripped out on my injection pump, which I will show you here in a second. Um, I was trying to put my governor spring in, and that went south for the winter. So I'll show you what happened. And I'll tell you why it happened. So, there's a screw down there. Stripped it out. Freaking, um, I thought, hey, why don't I just use one of those, huh? Allen wrenches with the ball thing on the end of it. Yeah, just stripped it. Right size and everything, just stripped it. So, I'm gonna try and get a nut on there, I'll zap it on, and then if I can break it free that way, that'd be, I can, we can get the rest, everything else torn apart, and then uh, put the governor spring in, and then uh, be able to do uh, some highway driving, some real highway driving. And I'm kinda thinking about maybe taking it out to Idaho um, you know, maybe when I get some, uh, recoup my funds, um, because I'm not really buying anything for this anymore. I'm kind of just saving, really. And I'll probably just take it out, out on the open road, and once we get into Idaho, just, uh, take it all the way to Highway 20 and go the back way to, um, freaking, uh, Yellowstone. Yeah, 16 gallon tank in the front and I get I'd say a minimum I get like 30 on the highway let's just say that that should be plenty to get me all the way to my sister's house out in there in uh, Napa, Idaho so yeah I might do that and I'll probably set up my tripod set up a tripod in here somewhere and then that, and then we will do like a time lapse video. Um, you know, because it's just weird, you know, like an 82, an old Ford truck, all the way out to Yellowstone with no problems, getting 30 miles to the gallon. With the governor spring and a four speed, we should be able to do 75 just fine. I usually go about 65, 70, so that's about pretty much the current limit it has now, so that's, that's fine. And I've gone driven hours with it that way it's it doesn't it doesn't mind I get 30 miles to the gallon at that so yeah I know I get more but I just actually kind of want to underrate this because you know it's not always you know it could be you know 40 one trip but then the next one you know every trip's different different grades and stuff but anyways I got something else I want to show you that my uh, father picked up uh, from uh, I think it was like an estate sale or whatever. They had some uh, car parts there. Just so happens, and not that I need it, but I was gonna put it in anyways when I do the AC. And check this out. Brand new heater core for my truck. Brand new. Yeah. Brand freaking new. Look at that. Oh, I can't. That's gonna be nice. Apparently. This is a few years old. We got a, back when they made manuals. The one I had before the truck was like that thin. And when it came to like, you know, oh, to remove the tire, take to your local tire shop or dealer. You know, kind of like that. You're like, fuck this. I paid $26 for them to tell me to go to the dealer. No. I need to make a manual for this thing. Modified Ford pickup with 4BT Cummins. Oh, man. Anyways, I gotta go.